Hello and welcome to another episode of Develop with WP. My name is Bobby and today we are going to um, build off the last video where we made a very simple custom post type and today we're going to make a very uh, complex custom post type. Um, uh, disclaimer here, I think this is like the seventh time I've made this video. <laughs> it is such a difficult video to make because um, mainly because if you look at the codex for register post type which is the the call that we use you can see here there are just so many different arguments um, that you can set up for this post type and what I've been trying to do with these videos in the past recordings is really cover all of these um, and I'm still gonna try and do that in this video but I may skip over some of them just because um, it's a lot of the a lot of them are very um, obscure not not from a code codex standpoint because they are obscure which is part of why I'm making this video I want to get rid of some of that um, unknown around some of these but some of them just their use case form is very very minimal like that the odds of you ever using some of these are pretty low so I don't want to spend too much time on them because this could be this could be a long and tough video to watch and it, it'd be an important video but it could be a long and tough video so uh, without further ado Let's try not to make it any longer than it needs to be. Let's get started. So this is the code that we had previously that created our basic um, jobs, job listing, um, custom post type. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to empty out this array for right now. And we'll, we're going to add stuff back into it later. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create two new variables. All right, and these two variables, these are going to be used when we create our labels, which I'll show you in the codex. But we're going to create a variable that's going to hold the singular version of our name and the plural version. All right, so you have job listing and then we have job listings. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable called labels. It's going to be equal to an array. And inside of here, we're actually going to make a, uh, an associative array of all of our different labels. So the first one is name. And that's going to be equal to our plural variable. Um, so let me show you these in the codex. One of the first things in here under arguments are the labels. Uh, and it says right here, you know, label is a plural descriptive name. Uh, but if you see, there's a whole bunch of different labels. And I kind of showed you this in here. If you go to job listings, it says no posts found. If you go to the trash, it says no posts found. So what we're going to be doing is changing all those labels. Another instance is where it says add new post. We're going to make that say add new job listing. So by creating all these labels and setting them all up, we'll be able to create a more custom, custom post type. Uh, so let's get let's do a few more. I'm just going to there's a like I said there's 14 of them. I'm only going to type out a few and then we're just going to copy and paste for the sake of time. Obviously, the singular name is going to be equal to our singular variable um, this add new label and all these label names I'm getting are in the codex I'm not making these these label names up this is just gonna be equal to an a string called add new and the next one add new item uh, this is the last one I'm gonna do because it is slightly different and it's going to allow me to kind of touch on a topic that may be new to some people. All right, so what I'm doing here, this is uh, this is what's called concatenation. So I'm taking this string of add new and I'm concatenating and adding on to the end of it the singular variable, in this case job listing. And what this is going to output is it's going to output add new job listing. 
Uh, a few things, one of the things to note is that I've left this space here because if I didn't leave a space here when this would concatenate, it would literally smash the word new and the word job together and there would not be a space. So um, you need to remember to leave spaces um, leading and trailing if in some instances um, when you're using dynamic variables and concatenating them with strings. All right, so I'm going to copy in the rest of these. All right, and then I'm going to do one more thing really quick. I'm going to clean up, clean this up. Uh, one of the one of the benefits to working with PHP is that uh, white space. So all the space I'm creating, this white space, doesn't matter. Um, and the beauty of that is that it allows me to then go and set up my code as I am now, to where it's really you know clean and easy to read. Uh, it's just a benefit to working with PHP is that you're able to make stuff that's you know super user friendly for you, the developer. Um, so you can see there's a lot of concatenation going on here. Here's an example where I was telling you where you need to leave the space leading and trailing a variable so that the words get um, printed out onto the screen properly. So that's the labels. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into this arguments array that we had already previously used and we're going to add stuff to it. Again, just like our labels, it's going to be another associative array. The first thing is going to be label labels it's going to be equal to our labels variable of all of our labels it's pretty easy um, and then I'm gonna put I, I think um like I said I've done this video a bunch of times uh, this is all the same thing it's just an associative array so I am going to copy and paste this uh, to save time because what's really important isn't that you can see see whether or not I'm able to type good which I cannot <laughs> it's to see whether or not is to find out what the heck all these things do. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, so let me clean this up. All right. So you can see one thing. One of the things that's different is that a lot of these arguments are just true, false, boolean values. Uh, and if you go to the codex, like I said, you'll see all of them. There's just a bunch. So like the first one we come to right here is public. So what is this doing? This is really like one of the big ones. Um, when you set public to true or false, really what you're saying here is you're saying how visible do I want this custom post type to be? Like how easily should users and viewers be able to interact on the front and back end with this custom post type? That's, in essence, that's what you're telling it. And what's cool about the public um, argument here is that if you set it to true or false, by default, it changes a bunch of these ones that follow it, like publicly queryable, showing UI. It changes those to different values as well by default um, based on whether this is true or false. So if you make this true and you want this to be very accessible, then it makes these true or false, depending on what they are, to make them very accessible. Likewise, if you set this to false, then a lot of these by default get set to false or true to make it uh, a very exclusive custom post type. Um, so I could just delete these off of here and not even worry about it. But by having them on here, it does allow me for some of those maybe um, outlying use cases where I would maybe want it to be very public, but then I do want to exclude it from something. Uh, it would allow me to set that up. So by having them already in here, it makes it easy for me to change them. So let's go through some of them. Uh, publicly queryable. So what this means is that is do you want this post type to be part of the WordPress loop? Um, so you can exclude this from the, the standard WordPress loop if you wanted to. Uh, exclude from search. This one is if you had search functionality built into the front of your website, do you want to exclude this custom any of these custom post types from showing up in those search results? Uh, there's another one down below that works in conjunction with this, but we'll get to that. Uh, show in nav menus. So this one's set to true. This is one of the visible ones that you can see. So let's go look at this one in action. If I go to menus, you'll see job listings is here. And so it makes it easy for me to add job listing post types to my main menus or, or any of my menus. Um, but if I go and I change this to false and save it, and I go back and refresh, you'll see that it disappears. All right, a um, couple of more. Let's get rid of that one. 
Uh, show on UI. So if you set show on UI to false, what will happen is, is it'll disappear from this menu. Now that's not what this one does per se. That's just one of the things that happens. What show on UI is made is it's made for you to not have it in this menu and then to create your own UI for this post type. Um, I've never done that. I'm not going to claim to have ever done that, but that's what that one is doing. Um, so if there's a if there's a use case for you out there where that seems like a, a thing to do, uh, you're gonna have to. I'm not gonna be able to tell you how to do it. You're just gonna have to Google. But that's what this show in UI setting is doing. Uh, this show in menu, it's uh, again similar to the UI. It's gonna remove it from the menu, but it's still gonna use the same WordPress UI that comes with any post type. It's just not gonna be a top level menu item. Uh, show in admin bar. So we're, what is this? This is right here. If this add new, you'll see job listings shows up. So we've made job listings something that you can easily make a new one of. Uh, if I were to change that to false. And refresh. Then it would go away. Okay. So menu position, if we look at the codex, the codex actually does a really good job of laying out the different numbers and, and, and what this does is it allows you to control where your post type shows up in the dashboard menu. Uh, so I have it set to 10 right now, so it should be below media. And you'll see that it is below media. If I look on here, if I put anything between five and 10, it should be below post. So let's do that. Let's change this to six, save it go back refresh now we should be below posts and you'll see that it has moved up to below posts uh, the next one this is a really cool one. I really like this one this might be my like the, the my OCD part of me kicking in but this allows you to set the icon to something that's um, really neat and you'll notice that the icon I have really fits the scheme of all the other icons and the reason that is is because I'm using what's called a dash icon and then WordPress has a list of these so Dash Icons is a font icon library similar to Bootstrap or Font Awesome. The only difference is that it's actually included in WordPress. And they have this page at developer.wordpress.org. And it's really cool because you can look through here, find the icon you want. For example, we're using this one. And when you click on it, it puts it up here. And it gives you this Dash Icon businessman uh, wording. If I were to go and click on another icon, it would give me a different one. And I can just copy this, go to my code, and then replace it in here, save. And now when I go back and look at my menu, you'll see that it changes to that new icon. So that's a really neat little feature. Okay, can export. So, you know, WordPress has an import export functionality. You know, do you want this, this post type to be an exportable option as long, along with all the other options that are in there? So that's really neat that you can set that. Uh, so I have it set to true. So now when if people were to go to export, they would see job listings or jobs this custom post type is an exportable item delete with user what this is saying is it's saying that when you delete a user account do you want to delete every post of this post type that they created uh, you can see here i'm sending it to false i want to keep the post even if i delete the user but that that's really neat you know there could be some use cases where anytime a user gets deleted you'd want their post to go as well uh, hierarchical so do you want this to act more like a page where you have parent child and grandchild relationships or do you want this to act more like a post um, if you set it to true it'll act more like a page false will act more like a post we have it set to act like a post has archive so similar to hierarchical um, do you want this to have an archive page uh, by saying it to true you'll be able to use the wordpress's templating uh, structure to create a custom archive page for this custom post type if you were to set it to false you would not so that's just that's that's what that setting does query var <clears throat> so this one again I talked I touched on is is similar to exclude from search what this is doing is it's um, it allows you when people search for stuff you'll notice the URL changes and it has like a question mark equals question mark and then a string of text. Query var allows you to change that URL like to be whatever you want it to be after the question mark. Um, if you set it to true, it's just going to use the, um, the, 
the custom post type slug. So I set, I have it set to true. So it's just going to use job as part of that slug. But I could add a, I could put a string value in here of whatever I want it to be. So that's neat. Um, capability, capability type. So these next three, I have one grayed out. I, I'm not including it, but I just wanted to list it on here. These next three are very similar. Capability type, meta map capability, and capabilities. What these three um, arguments are controlling is how accessible or who can ex who can have access to this custom post type. Um, what's really neat is just by using capability type you're able to give a, a large amount of um, access. So for example, by setting capability type to post, that would mean that any user role, so like contributor and uh, author, would have access to this custom post type. Um, by If you set it to be page, then people only user roles of editor or administrator would have access to this custom post type. So capability type is really the one that a lot of people use because it allows you to quickly just give this some type of capability, you know, our user roles and link to the user roles and capabilities. Uh, MetaMap cap allows you to actually take the default user role or user capabilities, excuse me, that are in user roles and make them instead of having those capabilities say, instead of having a user have the capability of edit, edit post or, or that kind of stuff, you can say edit post should now be in this case should be edit job listing. So you can fine tune those capabilities and map them to be equal to something more similar to what your post type. So similar to what we do with labels, you can do with these meta capabilities. All right, last one. <laughs> I feel like this is where we need to take a deep breath. This video is not a very fun video, I know that. Uh, but it's important to know this stuff. Uh, capabilities, this is actually really cool. Um, Everybody take a deep breath. All right. So capabilities. What this allows you to do is this allows you to is this allows you to create your own custom capabilities that um, for the different user roles in WordPress. Um, so you can just create totally new capabilities. It is worth noting that you can create totally new capabilities outside of creating a custom post type. But it is neat that this option is in here. Um, one note here though is that even though you create these capabilities, they're not associated to any user roles. So you would then have to, it's a two part process, you would have to create your capabilities and then you would have to go and edit those user roles for say editor or contributor and then add these new capabilities to their role so that they would take effect because just setting new capabilities doesn't do anything. All right, rewrite. So the rewrite uh, is usually an array, and I'll be honest, a lot of times I just, I usually only have this slugs equals jobs, and I skip the rest of these um, other things that you can have in this array. Um, but we'll go through them, or some of them. Slug, this is, like I said, this is the one I use. This just sets your pretty permalink link so that when someone visits one of these post types, it'll say yoursite.com slash jobs slash the post types title. Um, pages allows you to uh, set up easily set, uh, set up pa pagination uh, like pages has and then feeds is, allows you to say whether or not you want this post type to be part of the RSS feed and I'm actually going to set this to false because in this instance for what we're building we do not want that I'm also going to set this to page because I want people above um, author to not have access and then the last thing we're almost done supports if we go to the codex, supports is pretty well defined as well, or laid out in the codex. It lists all the different things that you see on a post edit screen uh, and which ones you want to include. So if you look at my code, I'm including the title, the editor, the author field, and the custom field. And if I go to job listings and I go add new job listing, you'll see that I have the title, the editor, and if I go to screen options, I can enable custom fields and author and you'll see those custom fields and authors show up. So this is where you control which default input field types show up. Um, if I were to go in here and put thumbnail and refresh, you would see the featured image meta box show up. So that's, that's a really cool feature that I think you'll use pretty often. 
right? And then the, the end part of this hasn't changed from even, even from our basic custom post type. Our register post type call has not changed. The only thing we've really done is this arguments variable. It's just become a very robust um, variable. It has a ton of stuff. You know, it has... We have a multi-dimensional array for our labels variable, which is then called into args, and then we set all these args, and then in some instances, you know, this is like a multi-dimensional array because you have arrays within arrays within arrays. Uh, so there's a lot going on, but the pure register post type call has not changed. So there's, so there's that. Uh, the, the last thing I'm going to touch on, and we're going to give this video a wrap, and I cannot wait. <laughs> I cannot wait to get on to something new. Um, is why I structured this the labels with the singular and plural. So I could have just put in here and typed job listings, job listing, job listing, job listing, just put them in here as strings. The reason I put these variables, it, it's probably obvious to some people, but um, sometimes there's use cases where you're not going to have a lot of custom post types where it's it's advantageous to just copy and paste this code snippet into your new code and then when you do that you're going to, you're going to want to change all these labels and while there was some quick find and replace stuff and some cool little tricks you can do to like edit all these really quick it's really nice to have these variables set to where I can just go in here and change job listing to say book and now I have a book um, custom post type now obviously you're also going to want to change this the slug down here but uh, but that's that's why I have this array set up like this with these using these variables. That's also why I include a ton of these different um, arguments in my list here is because while they don't change often, it is I don't have to go and look them up in the codex. They're already all in here and I can just easily change them to true or false based on the use case that I'm working with. All right, so we got this video done. Uh, I'm going to review it. Hopefully it looks great because I don't want to have to do this uh, an eighth time. Uh, but again, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it really informative. I know it wasn't the funnest video to watch. It's just me rambling on and on and on forever about arguments. But uh, I mean, there's really no other way to go about it, especially because the codex is kind of vague on some of this stuff. Uh, be sure to check the description area on this video. I do this on every video, but definitely check out this one because I'm going to have a lot of links to a lot of valuable resources out there by other people um, that cover some more of this stuff in depth as well. Uh, if you're looking for some some more reading uh, but anyway uh, please subscribe to this channel share this video like it uh, do anything you think is um, that will help us if you found it useful if not then put a thumbs down um, and and as always whether you like the video or not need help or not you know I'd love some comments uh, I look forward to interacting with everybody in the comment section so uh, feel free to leave a comment or a question and I'll do my best to get uh, an answer or back to you. So again, thanks. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.